there. Oh, there we go. Good morning. We are live with Art Joyous Sharing. Chelsea and Peg Robinson, we do a live each Thursday, 1030 Central Standard Time on YouTube. If you're catching us later, we'd love to have you join us live. And good morning, Shell. Good morning. I hear we we're have, talking about uh, abstract. People, we have people joining uh, us in the house. We've got Barb and Sybil and Ela and Rennie. Let me scroll back, see who I'm missing here. Hila, Rennie, Barb, Sybil. That's what we've got. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, people. Oh, yeah. I'm just turning on my secondary device. Okay. It's working. Yay. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a thumbs up now, even before the show even starts. You guys can do that too. <laughs> so true, so true. <laughs> so. Abstract art, what is it? The basic definition of abstract art is art that, that tries to represent something without using the actual thing, like trying to represent something by using form and color and shape, but not necessarily an exact line drawing of the thing. The visual language gives you the idea of something and if you do it well the person who looks at the art will say oh well that that reminds me of blah 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 like uh, the last time i did an uh, abstract art piece on the live show people told me in the comments later that it reminded them of a cityscape it reminded them of a lake with trees and forested areas in the background with mountains you know it, it gives the idea of something without being something Right. If you look at this piece, this is something that we did in the past. It's just suggestive. Yeah. Um, I I tend to do a lot of that type of work in my journal, so um, it, it's not it's not a bird, you know. It's just something suggestive. So. Yes, and mine's going to be very abstract, but it will hopefully suggest something to you by the time I get done. <laughs> hopefully. We shall see. That's right. Yep. So I have a 10 by 10 uh, wrapped canvas with a one inch. Actually, it looks like a half inch maybe wrap on it. And that's what I'm going to work on today. I'm going to use acrylic paint. I'm going to use collage. I mean, big surprise there. Um, and then after that, we'll see what happens. But I decided to get out my Dilutions paints um, in warm and cool colors to try to get me started with a palette knife or maybe a paint shaper or some other type of a shaper. I'm not going to use a brush to get me started. And I just wanted to, th these paints are so nice and bright and beautiful and, and awesome, but they do dry up. And Diane Reevely has come out with a different delivery system for her paints this year, which is a little, uh, see, it's just dry. That one's dead. So I'm just going to go through, look at them, and if they're dead, I'm going to throw them away. And then <laughs> we'll yep. see if we have any paint left after the end of that. It's so sad. It makes me sad. Yeah, well, you know, I did get some use out of them. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going to gripe about the fact that they dry out because all paints do dry out eventually. And I did like having the big open pot. I just didn't use it fast enough. So, you know, it was time. I, I've had them for a number of years. I got rid of them. Um, and I, I was sad because I like the colors. Yeah, that's what I like is they're so bright and so yeah. vibrant. Yeah. And it's not looking good. Oh, this one's Hi, Lori. Good. All right, that one's still good. That makes me happy. So I've just got a one of these big uh, Canson XL journals that I'm working in. And I'm sorry that you don't see the whole page. I'll try to move it around and, you know, make sure I try to stay in the shot. I uh, mask the edge with some masking tape just to keep it off of the coils here. And um, what I did was I went through and pulled out. When I, when I do... Uh, 
this type of work, I like to start with a little bit of collage and I picked some colors this morning that I don't usually work with, as Shell knows very well, because there's purple, and that's not my color. That's Shell's color. Um, yes. Purple so today. I pulled out some pinks and purples and things like that in these different papers. You know, these are just out of my paper stash. And I'll, as I start gluing things down on the page, I will pull from this stash of stuff to um, create my background. Now, you probably won't see a lot of this in the end. You know, I like to use some text paper. I like to use some of those deli papers, a lot of different things on here. But um, I'm just creating the background to start with. Yep, that's the thing about mixed media. I've been talking about in my channel for the last few videos is that oftentimes you make this beautiful thing, this beautiful background with your collage or your paints. You don't want to cover it up. Yeah. And in mixed media, it's all about the layers. So you just have to not be overly impressed with whatever it is that you made <laughs> to start out with. And people freak out when they watch, like I just had a, a fish video that was you know one of those negative painting type videos and people are like, oh but the, the collage was so beautiful why did you cover that up they're freaking out yeah well you know you can't it's about the layers for me you know i can't preserve every single layer because um i want to get to the finished product so so sad. Oh. Well, the bin is getting less and less as I throw away all these paint. It's me sad. So let's see, what do I want to use here? I've got some um, matte gel medium. To put this stuff down with because I want it to hold to the page. So when I work with a canvas like this, I like to make sure that I do something on the edges that coordinates because I like for the person who receives it or if it's myself or whatever to be able to hang it up without putting a frame on it. I get kind of frustrated with having to put frames on things because then you have to order them and then maybe they'll fit and yeah. Or maybe you have to go and spend a bunch of money at the framer if it's an odd shape. Yeah. Like, no, let's not do that. The, the thing I do like is like when you go to um, stores like Hobby Lobby, they do have the pieces of frames that you can uh, fit together. And, you know, if you've got something odd-sized, you can actually make a frame that's going to work with it. Yeah. Mix and match big yeah. frame pieces. Yeah. I like those too, but I tend to just work with canvases because then you can just put a, a thumbtack in the drywall. <laughs> yeah. That's Slap true. it up and you're done. I like that. Yeah. Well, I've got a I've got a lot of things that are unframed, and I've got things that are framed. It it just um, I like floater frames. Oh yeah, those are nice. They're they're yeah they're easy. And uh, oh, just stick my fingers in it. That might be an indicator of what's going to happen soon. <laughs> Can't imagine that I might maybe put my fingers in it. Mm, I do it all the time. I did put some art card on. That's good. <laughs> that reminds me, I should probably do that. You guys do that when you're working? You should. Yeah. This is this is art guard. Uh, this is a Winsor Newton art guard. 
And there's also a different one called Gloves in a Bottle, which is yep. I prefer the Art Guard. It's thick. It's like thick. Um, this I actually find at the um, drugstore sometimes. This yeah. you have to go to an art supply for. So I ordered mine on Amazon. Yeah, you can do that too. I probably even have links for it in my. Uh, probably. I think it's probably in both of our stores. Yeah. <laughs> it's good we stuff. We order it. It's good for protecting you from all the nasty chemicals that you might encounter when you're doing all this. Yeah. Because there's, you know, when you look at these paints and things, when, when you're looking at um, the different sites to order paints, a lot of them, if they're good sites, will tell you which ones have the cadmium and stuff like that in them that are, you know, cancer. Yeah. If they don't tell you, it's the more expensive ones. Yeah. yeah. If it's got the actual pink uh, stuff in it, then it's probably expensive. That's usually how it happens. So I ended up replacing a couple of my colors with lemon and ruby um, from the Dean Wakely paints because my yellow and my red were dead. Yeah. Okay, so that's that side. Now I want to do this other side with some different other colors. So let's see. That looks like it might be still good. Where did my thingy go? There it is. Yep, that one's still good. Yay! Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Shelly. Thanks for it's joining us today. Us. This is kind of fun. Well, you know, we always like gluing papers down. <laughs> well, I haven't even got to the gluing yet. I'm still doing oh, it. it. Oh, no, you're doing the color first. Yeah. I'm doing the blue one first. I'll get to the glue and don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't worry about that. I know you're gonna get to it. Yes. It would be pretty shocking if I didn't. Yeah. So I like to use a ruler just to rip my papers with. It, it's an easy way of uh, getting the piece you want. And not spend a bunch of time with a pair of scissors in your hand. This particular ruler I like a lot because it's got a straight edge. It's got a triple edge. You know, it's got a number of different ways to tear things. I had a real interesting week <laughs> again uh, we spent most of the week at the hospital so um, everybody's fine we're all home we're all doing fine but oh my goodness so this morning has been crazy with phone calls and um, <laughs> I may get interrupted again in the middle of this broadcast because um, I'm expecting more phone calls what color is okay with this one yet? So consequently, I have not been making art. Oh, she had to get out stuff this morning. 
because there wasn't even anything on her desk. Nope. That would be well, like really weird at my house. The, the problem was the week before I had moved everything in here. I'd moved my desk. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, not only was my desk clean, believe it or not. I know it's hard to believe, right? Um, but my whole setup has changed, so. Ugh, so messy. Hopefully this one's good. Oh, good. No, it's dead. Damn it. I've gotten out some copper. Darn it, darn it. I guess we're gonna go with some night and some piece from any other one. So so Di Diane Reevely's are now in the same thing as the Dina Wakely, the little squeezy bottle. I want to pick some more colors. I can with uh, the brighter colors just in a different container, which might be nice to do. Could I be. I love the colors, and it makes me sad that they're all needing to go in the trash. It makes me sad. Mm -hmm. it's fun. I have a bunch of gobs of paint on here. It's pretty fun. Done with gobs of paint. Ugh. Well, I found six that were still good. I still have a whole bin full of them to go through. And I'm just going to stack the good ones in the front. Let's get this a little bit dry because it's a little bit sloppy. Yes, indeedy. I want some white. I don't know. Do I? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? I don't know. I'm trying to decide. I'm going to collage next, so. I, guess oh, I thought I was going to leave some white in the background, but I seem to be covering everything up. So <laughs> <laughs> it just happens that way sometimes, you know. Barbara wants to talk about gloss medium versus matte medium. Do you want to talk about that or do you want me to talk about that? I'm obsessed with matte medium. Well, I like them both. It depends on the application. I mean, I like to use gloss on things that are not going in a journal um, just because the gloss sometimes sticks your pages together. So I tend to use the matte medium to put things down within a journal. Um, I like gloss uh, finishes on, okay, Here's the stuff we were working on last week. And you see it's got glossy finish on there. Uh, because these are panels. These are clayboard. And um, I wanted a gloss finish on there. So, and I may even pour a, another layer. You know, I may put some more stuff on here and pour another layer of some kind of gloss over the top of that. Because, um you know, most of your pouring mediums are going to be glossy too. I'm not sure what 
uh, what Barb is wanting to talk about. Gel medium versus matte medium, please. Um, what's your what's your question? Let's see. Oh, I'm using gel. Okay, you're what you're asking about. This is a matte gel. Okay. This is a matte gel medium. The reason I'm using a gel is because it's thick and it doesn't get my pages wet. Maybe that's what she's asking. Rather than a matte medium that is more liquid. Now the 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 deco art is not too bad. But you can see right away that this is more liquid. You see how it's running? And that, of course, is going to wet your paper more than a gel medium. Does that help? We'll see. We'll see if that's what she's asking. Oh, let's see. Where do I want to put this? So you can see on on just doing this page that I don't have I don't have a lot of the buckling that you would have with a real wet page. Let me show you if I can. The the paper itself is you know a lot of times you get it wet and it's just buckling underneath there because of how wet a medium you're using. Okay, all right, good. I'm glad glad we can help. Uh, as long as we're talking about mediums, let's pull the audience and see what their favorite uh, mediums are to work with. So I didn't hear the answer, but it looked like there you guys were talking about the difference between a fluid medium and a gel medium. Right. And I'm a, I use almost exclusively gel medium. Yeah. The only time I ever use a fluid medium is if it's with a very tender type of something like a napkin or a tissue. Yeah. Because then the matte gel grabs too much and it tears it. But all the rest of the papers, I use the gel and I, I don't really even need the fluid. The only time is napkins. And then I, I like this one um, from DecoArt for yeah. napkins. Yep, yep. Because it has something in it that seems to make them help help them not wrinkle. I don't know what it is. But. Well, and it's it's fluid enough that it penetrates the napkin and it um, seals it really well down to the page. Yeah, and it does not it does not rip the napkin. That's one of the problems with working with those real soft tissues like that is that they tend to rip. Yeah. So. Um, that's why I choose that one when I'm working with those types of papers. You know, it really depends on the surface, the paper you're working with. Um, you know, we, we choose different things for different reasons. Yeah. So I'm going to use some light molding paste now. Um, one of the reasons I like light molding paste is because it does dry faster than some of the others. And when I'm working in a journal, it's a nice thing to use. It's got it's got a thick consistency. Let's see. And I'm going to use some stencils here. Uh, I'm not sure what I want to use. I have to think about this a minute. I think I want to use this one. This is a stencil girl stencil, of course. Um, Look what I got, Meg. I got one of those fine misters. Yeah, don't you love it? <laughs> it's really cool. It, uh, they're it great. Make big water droplets. Yeah. I After love last it. week, I'm like, okay, fine, I'm going to buy that. 
And I did. And she did. Well, I like it. You know, I, I recommend like things to my friends because I like it. I think they probably might like it too. Yeah. Let's see. How am I doing here? So I'm just going to put a thin coat of this uh, light molding paste on here. Try to bring some of this together a little bit. Like some imagery. So I have a bit of wet paint over on this side. It did not get all the way dry. Imagine that. Yeah. The other thing I'm liking, whoops, I peeled up a little bit of the paper there. The other thing I'm liking are these um, silicone brushes when you're working with those mediums. I've got several of these. Uh, different sizes and shapes, and you can find them all over the place. I mean, this is an Art Basics one, which I think is from Finnebear. This is a Master's Touch uh, in a smaller size. I think that's about an inch. This one is a real small one. This is a cheapo that I got at um, Hobby Lobby. But when you're working with those mediums, you know, you get all that in your brush and then you got to do all that cleaning out. So um, these silicone ones work really well with this stuff. I need a smaller one. I was looking at the ones that I had. And I have super tiny ones. And then I have this two inch. But I don't seem to have like a one inch. Or something like that anyway for some reason don't ask me why because i don't know and Sib, uh sybil's asking about drying time you know sybil everything depends on the surface that you're on on the environment that you're in in uh you know how how you're going about applying things so you apply it <laughs> yeah i mean how thick is it how you know do you live in arizona yeah 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 so i mean um you see me i'm working on this page and it has quite a few layers of things on there i haven't done any drying yet and um yes it's going to take me now that i've got all of this on here it's going to take me a little bit of time to dry it and i'm going to get my heat tool out but um it's not bad you know and and i like to work like when i'm not doing a show i like to work on several pages at once so i might you know do this much set it aside to dry and then start another page and get another background done set that aside to dry by then this one's ready to work on so it all depends on how you work. Here in Arizona, I don't fuss much because generally, except for during the summer when we have monsoons, it's very dry and things will dry out quick enough, you know, quick enough for me not to have a panic attack. I started my collage now and I'm just putting on greens and blues on this side and then I'll put reds and pinks and oranges and stuff on that side. I'm tearing them with my with my little ruler just to get some torn edges. That's how I talk when my um, brush is in my mouth. 
<laughs> and if it's a thicker paper, I might mist it with my fun new mister just because I want to play with it. I'm not sure where I'm going exactly with this, but we'll find out when I get there. It's just fun. What happened to my ruler? Oh, there it is. Oh, there's a ruler. Yeah, and because it's abstract, I don't have to have a place I'm going with it. Um, it's going to speak to me as I work. But that doesn't mean you can't have a place you're going with it. If right. you want... If you're really trying to represent something and not just a abstract idea, you can certainly have an idea in mind. And I do have an idea in mind. I just am not sure how I'm going to get there. I have the very a very basic idea in mind. It's something that I sort of want, you know? You know what I mean, jelly beans? I know what you mean. I like papers. I like painting papers because they have pattern and shape on them. Especially if they've been gel printed or something. I just, I like the look of it. It is definitely a mixed media look to have all this pattern. It does not look like anything else that you might have, that you might be doing. It looks a certain way. And some people love it, like me, and some people think it's ugly. And if you're one of those ugly pe think people who think it's ugly, what are you doing here? <laughs> hi, Shelly. I don't know if we said hi to you earlier. I can't remember. I think we said hi to most of the people. Because this is a fairly small canvas, I'm trying to make fairly small pieces. However, I may not succeed. Who knows? That's a really cool piece. But I think it's too big, but I like it. I'll just wrap it around. Maybe I'll just. I don't know. I don't know. What are we going to do? Everything's getting all goopy. And I'm not staying on the screen very well. It's not new. I need some nice lighter blue. So I think that's probably dry enough for me to move on to another layer. Um, you know, it's not it's not perfectly dry. I can still feel moisture in there, but good enough. And you know, if there is some buckling in that, that one of the ways that you can straighten that out is just paint the back of your page later, and you know, then you've added moisture on both sides, and the paper is going to remember what it needs to do, and you'll get where you need to be. So I've got some fringy stuff over here. I need scissors for. Or I didn't get the paper torn straight. Good enough. Okay. Here, how about this? This would be good. <coughs> so I have, you can put this 
paper stuff aside now. I have a palette here. This is just a, a paper palette. Soho, I think I might have picked this up at Jerry's Artorama. And uh, the paper itself is not like the... I've had other paper palettes, but I really like this one for acrylic because it's almost like a shiny surface. And I, I've already used this surface this morning. I wiped it off so I can get back to the clear. Uh, so, I mean, if you're traveling, this is a really nice... Um, paper palette to have a few pieces of because then you don't have to take something bulky so on my palette the colors I think I want to use let me look at these okay so I've got some pinks and purples and reddish tones so I've got some deco art uh, Americana this is Poodle Skirt Pink. <laughs> uh, what a cute name. Poodle Skirt Pink. And this one is Coral Shell. I'm kind of lightening up a little bit with spring coming, right? Or maybe not. We'll see where I end up with today. Um, I've got some uh, Fluid Acrylic in Vermilion which is kind of an orangey tone. Stay on the screen. And let's see what's this. This is a primary magenta. Let's, let's start with that, shall we? I'm going to... Take a photo so that people know what these colors are. In case you want to replicate any of this. Get rid of that. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, you know, you always add some black and white or Titan Buff. Titan Buff's a good one to add, too. Doesn't always have to be white and black. Oh, this one's about done for. Oh boy, I have to get a different one. There's my white. And you know, I'm wondering, instead of going to the black, yeah, I'll go black. I'll blend it out with these other colors. Okay, so I've got I've got my palette right there. And I have this is a little tray. And then I got a bunch of small stencils in. I'm gonna grab a few of these. Or what all I want to use. These are these are you know pieces of stencils and, and small stencils that I've cut apart, that sort of thing. And let me get my little scruffiness here and just start with I want to put some color into these areas that have the texture. So I'm gonna start with that. Ah. Apparently I had turquoise, which stuck. <laughs> ah, fingers, terrible. 
Oh, I love this piece of paper. It's just cool. And I'm going to blend a little bit of that vermilion in. I'm going to have to tear it up, though. That's that. It's also fairly thick paper. And I want to... When I'm looking at this, okay, I like I like where the colors are going here, but I've got a lot of that text down here in this corner, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that pink tone now, and I'm going to use this as a stencil club stencil, and put some of that. Oh boy, that's pretty translucent. I think I need more pink and white together, maybe. Sometimes you have to blend, depending on the, the opacity of the paint. This one is pretty transparent. How are we doing time-wise? Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Marie. Um, they make me want to go do something messy. Well, of course. <laughs> messy is the name of the game here. Okay, not sure how I'm feeling about that, but we'll keep going. I think I want to bring in some of that primary magenta and tie this together. This one um, kind of reminds me of a church window or something. This particular stencil. I bet it's a Gwen LaFleur. She always does those kind of ornate ones. Probably. <laughs> yeah. been up in this corner yet. So what do I want? I'm gonna grab Pretty busy here. So we need to integrate a bit. Yes, yes, integrate. Stencils are great for that. liking that better.
definitely liking that better. This one is uh, Mary Beth Shaw stencil, of course, because I love her stuff. She makes the best stuff. Yeah. She really does. Yeah. Maybe well, because especially when it comes work. to that whole integration thing, yeah, her stuff works really well for that. So I think it's because she makes she's not like so literal, like it's not a flower; it's a representation of a flower. It's a circle. It's a, you know, she she's abstract. <laughs> she definitely is the abstract queen. Yeah. Let's see, I want to bring in some of that other color. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to take some photos uh, throughout here just so that you guys can see some of the process I can't and I'll, I'll post them in the group what's that Michelle I can't take photos <laughs> my camera yeah my secondary camera is my phone yeah which I take photos with so. well I'm lucky I have an iPad and all that other stuff so well, my iPad's got the comments on it, but I could probably watch the comments on the regular screen. They seem to be working now. Good. For the first few times, I didn't get the comments. Oh, the yeah. Only the person hosting did. So that was well, I think they I think they've upped their game plan on, you know, because when we started this, the software <laughs> had a ways to go. Yes, that's true. It did. And it's come a long way, baby. I need a baby wipe because I made kind of a mess. I like making a mess. It's fun. Well, I got... I got this black paint where I didn't really want it. So I will have to do something with that. It's okay. It's abstract. <laughs> no, this one. No paint yet, huh? Okay. I'm going to use one of these little sponges, see if I can be a little more precise. Let's see, where did I, where was I going with this? Right here. Uh, glop. Gloppy gloppy. Oh, gloppy gloppy is right. I need a mess. And in that case, we'll just try it again. Something about that particular sponge did not want to work right. I will do this sponge. See if it's working any better for me. Having a gloppy day. Have a gloppy day. <laughs> Being so wrinkly and making my mad. All right, what other stuff 
do I have here? This one might be interesting. Let's see. I'm going to do something with Barbara says we make her want to do something messy. Yeah. And she asked if anyone else is playing along. And Kimberly says yes. She's playing cool. in her art journals today. All right. That's that is cool. awesome. We are happy to inspire you to make a mess. That's absolutely right. Okay, I'm going to grab another stencil. a little bit more of that tighten up. I agree. More purple. Oops. Who said that? More purple. Shell's never going to disagree with more purple. Nope. Nope, nope. That's, that should be the way it goes. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it. It is looking pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with this, and it certainly is colors I was not accustomed to using. It's good to stretch yourself. Yeah. Well, Get out of your comfort zone. Pinks and purples are not my forte. Saying. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with my collage. Just make sure I've got some stuff on the edges. All this paper everywhere. I always do. <laughs> Sometimes I just look through my paper and I get inspired by a piece of paper. Yeah. Because it's just so cool. So I'm making yeah, some we, should have another, we should have another paper making session. Yeah, I think so. I'm mixing some of my colors because I want to create a gray. And just put some contrasting colors together and they'll come out great. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, and, and honestly, you know, if you've got all that stuff on your palette, you might as well use what you got. Because it's going to it's gonna work with what you're working with here. Because you've created a gray tone out of the things you got on your palette. I'm going to use that gray tone to highlight some of the texture on here. Let's 
still got a mess there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I do think I need to, it's kind of busy. So I might need to take it back an inch or two. I'll get rid of this. And I think for that, I'm going to rethink what I'm using here. Just drop it all on the floor. Um, let me go take a quick look at some stencils here. Thanks, Sybil. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, it, it's coming along. I'm, I'm really pretty pleased with how it's coming along. I think I need a little more of that purple in here somewhere. Um, what do I do with that? So I may do that with the next texturization. I've got some uh, purple here that I'm going to incorporate. So let me see if I can get up without knocking everything over. <laughs> I've got my cord wrapped around my leg. You know what happens then. Oh, and that's <clears throat> cold coffee. Shell may have had a call or something. Um, she's muted right now. So I'm not sure what's happened there. I forgot to unmute. Okay. All right. I was um, blow drying it. Oh, and sure. I don't have that quiet one anymore because it died. Oh, yeah. So my other one's loud. I'm afraid it's too loud. It's really not that bad. I've, I've, you know, we've been able to talk over it. I don't have the money right now to pick up a new one, so it's going to have to wait. Coffee beans. These things look like coffee beans to me. <laughs> I don't think they're intended to be coffee beans, but that's what they remind me of. Cool patterns, though. Oh, and of course, it's a Mary Beth Shaw. Of course. Yeah. You should have known. I like them. Let's see, what else do I have that's interesting? I just have this pile here of stuff that's mostly like either they're mostly cut apart ones and I think I just want to highlight that just for fun
this is just white gesso through the stencil just doing some integration and design maybe a little bit of design mostly I just like this stencil <laughs> yeah all right I think I'm a different color though I'm gonna get some yellow and I'm yeah. looking at these and I'm saying what do I want to incorporate in here I don't know if I want to go towards I think that's a little bit too much nature this is a cool one it's kind of like a bird but I think that's too much uh, like I think that's a little too ornate that's why I'm, I'm going through these and I like these it would repeat some of the circular stuff that's going on down here but then I also like this it almost looks like some kind of script or something you know what I could do instead of doing stencils is I could do some stamping. Stamping. That, that might be where I go next. So let me grab a purple. Got a deep lilac. And let me grab some stamps. What do I want to use here? Like that. That's a Seth after. That's a Seth after. Oh, that's a Seth after. Okay, I guess I'm liking Seth today. Um, Seth and Mary Beth, they've got the abstracts. Yep. That's kind of cool. Oh, we're gonna have to do something right in here. And I think it's gonna have to involve hmm, maybe some green. I don't know. I don't know. Green, bright green, like lime. Lime. You're so limey. I need something that's got like some circles or something. There we go. Circles, circles, circles. That's good. I just feel like there's something right here that's weird. I think I want to repeat some of that text. I grab another box here. Stamps, there's some text. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Part, part of what I do when I'm uh, doing these things is I will repeat shapes and patterns. You notice that one of, one of the things that I had down as the base layer was that uh, text paper. So I'm going to repeat that just by adding a stamped image. And I'm going to do the text, rather than using a black, I'm going to use this purple. And repeat that purple in here. Bright orange, bright orange. How about this one? Oh, way too much, way too much came out. Dang it. Oh, that's too big, too big. Okay, so let me see if I can get you a little closer on that. You can see that layering in there. Okay. Get rid of these. And 
I got this other one. This is a Wendy Vecchi. Not sure what this one is. Let me stamp it on a piece of that paper. Yeah, this is this is more like book text. Judy. So yeah, I'm going to repeat those circles, I think. There's a little bit of that purple. Okay. Right in there. And now, let me get out the black. Very translucent color. Just slightly annoying. Where is my. Some of that. So you sure. notice when, when I work with these stamps, I don't put them on a block or anything because I'm. It's in a journal. This thing is textured. I'm not too worried about you know the uh, the perfect stamping of these. A lot of orange on it. And a green, green, blue, blue. Just gonna put some of these squares in here. It's mostly, right now, it's mostly to get the suggestion where I want to go with this. Um, I go up or down or over. I think I'm going to go a little cattywampus here. A technical term. Cattywampus, yep. Got my Sharpie. Speaking of Teddy Wampus. And I think I want to go to my Pretty happy. Pretty happy with that. That's yeah, looking pretty cool, Shell. Pretty cool.
going to grab some pasta. Let's see what color these are. Oh, yeah, I like that color. So I'm just adding a little of the pasta on here. Like you do. Like you do. <laughs> I'm doing a little bit of finger painting. Oh, finger painting is fun too. Just to get a little bit more integration in a few of these spots. You're bugging me a little bit. And then I think I'm going to do some scribble after that. Scribbles are fun too. Yeah. I don't know how much time we have left. Let's see. Uh, we have about uh, 15 or 20. Yeah. Yeah, not very much. Let's see. What color is this one? I think I'm not going to finish, probably, which is not cool. I like to finish. Okay, I'm liking this. Okay, let's see, where am I now? I don't know, where are you? I'm figuring out where I'm headed with this. You know, there's, there's a certain point where you're saying, all right, I'm liking what's going on here, but there's just a few things that need to be done, right? Right. So... That's a little more peachy color. I think I'll put some of that up there and let it drip. I think it needs some drips. And that's where that wonderful spray bottle comes in. <laughs> you should get those wonderful drips. Uh, 
And where did I put that one thing? Yeah, I think this is going to call for a little gold or copper or something. Copper! Where there's some areas of this, I, I just, I'm going to have to take some pictures of them and duplicate because it will be incorporated into other pieces of art. Because <laughs> you know how you get some texture and things in, in just certain areas of a piece and you love it. What I did, but I had a whole bunch of skins too. I what I did with those skins. Let's see. Let's pull this back. Let's see where we are with this. I don't know if you guys can see, like right in here, I'm, I'm loving what's going on. But copper, gold, something here. Yeah. in there. this look like? Oh, yeah. Sparkle. <laughs> Maybe I should have named my dog Copper. It does kind of look that color. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
<laughs> Did you see that, Shell? She says she's surprised you didn't name your your dog Copper. Yes, I saw that and I responded to it. It's true. I probably should have. She is a reddish copper color. Um, Barbara, this is a China marker. It's like a waxy crayon. And that's what I used. And then I blended it with a blending stump. And now I'm using a fine liner with white fluid paint in it. Which is not behaving itself very well. It seems to have, need to be cleaned out and de-chunked. De-chunked, yes. Let's see. There's this little pin that comes in the lid of the flatliner, which is supposed to keep it clear. And for the most part, it does. But I seem to just be having like some weird bubbling and strange, strange stuff like that. Ah, oh, shoot. And drips. I probably just need to clean the whole thing out and just refill it because I haven't done that in a long time. I'd probably be smart. He's giving me he's giving me things I don't want. It's being weird. It happens. Yeah. Weird happens. It does more often than you think. Oh, I'm at a point where I'm not. Not happy anymore. <laughs> no? No. Well, I think my black is pretty much empty. I might have to change something here. Oh, shoot. I think my black fine liner is empty. And I want to do something about these little swirls inside. So maybe I'll use pasta in. And just Let's see.
you know, you're always one layer away from something. Always. If this was dry, I have something else I wanted to do. But I'm not sure it's going to be that one. Digging that. So, I'll get a paintbrush. Get a paintbrush, babe. That would work. Is this glue working anymore? That would be a note. not coming out at all. I think it's done for. Uh oh. So what other kind of glue do I have that's similar to this? Not really anything. Darn it. I guess we'll go with this mixed media glue. Maybe I'll apply it with a brush or something. Um, maybe a ball stylus. The reason I wanted to use the multi glue, the Tombow multi glue, is because it stays wet, kind of like a um, post it note. And this one doesn't. But what I wanted to do was put a little gold flake on. And I just don't know if it's going to work with. This stuff is so messy. Oh dear. But fun. Lots of fun. Just messy as heck. But it is a good day to make a mess, right? It is a good day for messes. 
So I think I'm probably going to need that to dry completely or very close before I start brushing these flakes off. And I'll try to keep them on this, this under paper so that I don't have flakes everywhere in the world. I guess I'm going to need a little bit over here. I was kind of wanting to even go maybe a little bit out. I'm just try to like kind of put some dots of it across, you know, here and there. But it does have to have glue to glue it. So I think I'm going to have to just let it dry and then, you know, worry about it later. I'm looking for a lid. I have to pull one off the bottle. And use it. There we go. I've got a Bye, Marie. Lid here. Yeah, I have to go take care of my father-in-law here very soon. But our show is just about over, so. Yeah, I think we are winding down here. Yeah. Got to go get him and make sure that he's out of bed and that he's had something in his tummy, which is a tricky thing because he doesn't want to eat. Yeah. Eating so much. Really, just need to. Not, you know, I'm just not hungry. Yeah, whatever. A six foot two man cannot survive on one pretzel. No, they don't. And then their kidneys shut down because they're not getting enough food and water. And yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're at at my house. Is just uh, forcing him to eat. Yeah, I'm sorry. That He's not ready to give up his uh, his power over his life, and that's something that can he can control. Yeah, how much food he puts in his face. So I don't blame him. I don't want people to tell me what to do either. But no, it's it's not really telling them what to do. You're just trying to keep them alive. You know. Yeah. They they got to understand that we're not trying to be mean. We're trying to help. Yeah, help you. I'm not sure that they really get that sometimes, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough sometimes. So anyway, yeah, we are just right at the top of the hour. Does anyone have, have any questions before we go? What's that? Does anyone have any questions before we go? Oh yeah. I think this is pretty much done, and um, I don't know if you guys can tell what it's about, what it's representing or not. But I'm gonna let this completely dry for like an hour, and then I'm gonna brush really vigorously brush the flakes off, so that it'll just be bits where the glue was. Cool. Anyway, that was our abstract play today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give us a thumbs up. And you guys can leave a comment or a question below. If you're just tuning in after the live stream, we're glad that you're watching the recording. And uh, please come and join us sometime in the live stream if you can manage it, because it's a lot of fun to uh, comment and share with uh, the other people. Sure is. Yeah. So thanks, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you now. Oh, thanks everywhere.